in the words of Bishop Burke, and it is so. <laughs> and it is so. Um, today I want to talk about, and what God has given me is from imitation to the real deal. From imitation to the real deal. It's time out for us being fake. It's time for us to be real. And I want us to know that imitation is not a bad thing at all. Because we all imitate, or we all have imitated somebody. Whether it's in the way we dress, whether it's in the way we talk, whether it's in the places we go or the things that we do, we all began to imitate someone. You know, as, as my nieces watch me or as I watch my mother, things that we learn, we learn from the imitation. You know, the way I try to comb my granddaughter's hair is because I've seen my mother and how she's combed hair, an imitation of what we saw. But when that imitation becomes the real deal, when I start now, I've learned from my mother, and now it's time for me to teach my granddaughters and to teach my nieces and to teach others that's under me from imitation to the real deal. Imitation is the action of using someone or something as a model. I'm not trying to be just like it, but it is my model that I use. It's giving me um, an ideal of the way I should go or the things that I should do where I'm able to go out and then when I see that item and I've imitated that, then now I'm the model. Now someone can follow me. Now someone can imitate me. And see, where I'm coming from and the person that does that modeling and tells you to follow me as I follow Christ is our Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul would tell us about imitating but then becoming the real deal. So, a thing intended to simulate or copy something else. A model. Paul encouraged the Thessalonians to follow him. To imitate him. But what we need to know, he wasn't talking about himself. He wasn't saying, hey, I'm Paul. I'm the man. You know, whatever I tell y'all to do, that's what you all need to do. That's not what Paul was saying. He was saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Because I want you to do not what I do as Paul, but what Christ has put inside of me, the word and the teaching that he's put inside of me, that I can go out and teach someone else. And then now what God tells us to do and what Jesus told us to do is to be disciples to draw others in. Amen. That's what Paul is saying. See, if you imitate me, because I know I'm confident, Paul is saying I'm confident that the things that I do have been ordained by God. Paul is saying, I know that I'm not taking a step unless God tells me to take this step. He's saying that I know I'm not in this place just because I coincidentally ran into this place. I'm not here talking to you all just because I coincidentally came to um, this area to talk to you. I'm talking to you because God has told me to go here. He's saying the words that he said are not my words. Because I don't want you to follow me, Paul says. And the only reason why you need to follow me is because I'm following Christ. Now, if you want to follow Christ, then you come and go with me. But if you want to follow something else, then you don't need to be behind me. Because the way that I'm going is all lined up with the word of God and what God tells me to do. How many of us can say you can follow me because I'm following Christ? Are oh, we the model? Can we be imitated? Can we be duplicated? Can the words we say, can somebody say those same words again? You know how we'll say, if I say something once, I can say it twice. Can we say somebody, if I say something, you can say it behind me? Are we that confident in the words that we say? To follow me as I follow Christ. Paul was, I thought, I thought Paul was a little cocky song. You know? He wasn't no more to think. He, he got it together. But then God starts to, to, to show me. He ain't talking about him. He's just a figment. He's just that tangible item that you can see. You know, just like that faith when we have those tangible items that we need to hold on to that we can actually see that has been done. That's what Paul is saying. I'm that tangible item that you can see. The words, because everybody, their relationship 
It's just not at that point where they can hear God for themselves. So you have to have someone that can give you the words that you can't hear. The confirmations that you can't hear. That's what Paul said. What the words that I'm giving you is what God gave me. These are not my words. Because see, I, Paul had his own testimony. He could tell somebody, you know, I, I talked against God. I was the biggest devil, the biggest fool there was. But look what he done to me. Look at the place where he put me in. But now I am his mouthpiece. When I used to talk against him, now I can talk for him. Now I'm representing him when I was representing these idol gods and saying that he is not the one. Why are you doing this? I was getting people killed because they were saying your name. But Paul says his testimony like, you know, look at me. How God loved me just enough. How I had to go through my own experience to realize who God truly is. And now I can tell you. See, sometimes we go through some, we try to tell somebody something that we ain't been through ourselves. You know, when I was um, on Saturday with um, Veronica, Sister Veronica, and I'm like, the story that she tells, I can't tell this story. I can't reach out to Chelsea if she's going through that situation and say, Chelsea, this is how I came out. Or this is what I've done in a domestic or a sexual abuse situation. I cannot tell that story. But as long as she's able to go out and be transparent and tell that story, then she's going to draw people to her God that brought her out. It's through telling our story. It's not holding it in. So God, well here, we would think some things that could see and truly imitate. If we took the time and watch actions and listen to teachings. And that's why with our young people, they don't understand that when they think just because we got them in church, that that's enough. But when you're being occupied with your cellular devices, you know, when you're being occupied on, on looking around and see what somebody else is doing, you're just here, but you're not hearing anything. You're H-E-R-E, -E, but you're not E-H-E-A-R. Right. You're here, but you're not hearing. That's right. That's good. Because I know myself that if I look down, oh, I don't get something. Uh -huh. Because our focus is taking all of what we need to hear. Amen. And we have to take that time to watch action. Watch the praying for one another. Watch how we embrace each other with love. And then we imitate that. And once we imitate it as an adult, and it's not about the leaders, it's about each and every one of us in here that come to church every Sunday and say that we love God, and we go out and show them how to love. My, my son should not hear me on the phone talking about Ursula. He should not hear that. that. That should not be a conversation because then he's like, well, mama, if you can do it, and, and me being an evangelist, then what's the difference in, in me? Why, why am I going to church? Why are you sending me to church? Why are you taking me to church if you're not doing what you what you say you should be doing or should not be doing? Why are you gossiping? Why are you saying bad things? We have to be mindful of what we say around our children because they hear our every word and they use it back against us. Whether, whether it's in their words or in their actions, it comes back against us. He even, Paul even talked about his work ethic and how no one should think that they deserve a handout. Uh, we're thankful. I know I'm thankful. A pastor is probably thankful when people come up and they bring us our water. But guess what? You don't have to. We should just ex assume that somebody is supposed to bring us something to drink. I should not assume that Keisha is supposed to bring my, my, my um, materials up here. And I should be thankful that it's done. Because guess what? The same way her hands and feet did it, my hands and feet could do the same thing. And Paul was saying, if y'all can see, I work with y'all. I didn't expect for you all to just feed us. I worked in the fields. I, I, I did my own crop. I, I went out there and labored to receive the food so we could eat. My work, work ethic shows that I don't assume anything at all. Imitate me. Follow me. That's what Paul, Paul, and we can just read through all of those um, Philippians, 1 Timothy, Thessalonians, all of those scriptures Corinthians, those books that we can see how Paul showed them, not just said it with his words, but showed it in his actions. So I'm going to talk.
talk about a few things with imitation to the real deal. 2 Kings 22 and 23 tell the story of Josiah, who was made king at the age of eight. Of course, he did not know how to rule, but he imitated King David. And we know that David was a man after God's own heart. Even David had his own testimony that he could tell. But then he lined his life up to follow God and to do what God wants him to do. So through him aligning himself, then Josiah imitated King David. And through imitating King David, he ruled for 31 years. So he came from being a, from following, from imitation, he became the real deal. And when he ruled, he was a ruler that was a successful ruler. Because when he ruled, he ruled according to what God wanted him to do. Even though his daddy and his granddaddy, they were bad kings. They the ones that served idol gods. They didn't serve our God. But since he had David in his place, since he had David in his life, then he was able to be a successful ruler. All the time, my daddy may not have been the best godly man or a godly man. <laughs> but I've had people in my life that have helped me to be a godly woman. And we have to know that all the time we're not going to learn from our parents. We're not going to learn from, you know, our grandparents or our aunts and our uncles. You know, for my brother, he had to have someone else to step into his life to say, follow me as I follow Christ. Because he didn't have that role model. You know, and unfortunately for many of us, we didn't have that father in our life to tell us, follow me as I follow Christ. To be that example that we need them to be so we could be successful in our Christian walk and in our Christian journey. Y'all, we really don't have to worry about this. You know, I can put this down. Y'all know I don't need all this for real. At all. Okay. So God will place individuals in our path that are worthy of being imitated. Amen. And then we imitate them and we become the real deal. We become those real Christians that God wants us to be. You know, we say Christians, but we need to put that out the way because now we're all about that kingdom mindset. Because anybody can call themselves a Christian. Anybody can say that I love the Lord, I've been saved, but then they live a life that's like the world. But when we say that we have a kingdom mindset, that, that lets us know that we're following the kingdom that God has for us. When our kingdom comes, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. So we're following till our kingdom comes, that path that's been set for us, All having right. a kingdom mindset. So the statement that the world is watching, men and women of God, is an understatement. That's an understatement. <laughs> because if I move the wrong way, if I say the wrong thing, I'm not even saved in school no more. Because <laughs> these kids done Googled my name and they done pulled up a sermon that I done preached. Uh -oh. I ain't, so I'm really, I really, and I thank God for that. I thank God for putting me in that situation. They was looking up some notes that they thought I put out there and they saw my sermon. Uh -oh. And I was asked one day, they were talking about it. <laughs> and then they came to school. You know y'all was going to have that bowl student. Miss Cooper, I didn't know you was a preacher. <laughs> I said, yes. And they, the boy said, no, they told him the boy. Such and such pulled it up. And he said he saw you preaching. And they asked him, did you listen to the whole thing? He said, yes. And the thing about it, what I didn't know, is that my student was an atheist or is an atheist. So the kids had said, well, that's an improvement. Yeah. If you were able to listen to her preach the word of God. Yeah. I said, y'all excuse me. If he see me acting 
right. Then no matter what may be going on in his household, then maybe he may pick up his Bible for himself and say, let me follow Christ like Miss Cooper is following Christ. Amen. If I can just tell him about the blessings that's going on in my life, he will say, let me follow Christ like Miss Cooper is following Christ. If he see my son come in and he's aligned and they see him in school walking straight and doing what he's supposed to do, then they're going to say, let me follow Christ. Yeah. Let me just see what's going to happen oh, yeah. if I do this. Yeah. God is a good God. Yeah. He's a good God. He's a good God. In 2 Chronicles, hmm. Joe, Joash's story was similar to Moses. Joash was hid so he wouldn't be killed. As a baby, he was hid as well. He was seven years old when he became king. He, too, was being raised by royalty just like Moses was. He was placed in a position to be guided by Joadiah. Joe, I didn't say his name right. Joe, Joe, uh, Day. And Joaday was someone that lived a godly life. And he manifested his leadership skills, which made him worthy to be imitated. So the, the situation that Joe is like Moses was put into. Where the royalty people, the royalty families groomed them and took them in and took care of them as their own. Those families were not living the godly life. We know about Pharaoh. We already know what he did. And, and, and Joash's um, royalty family that he was with, they didn't do right either. They didn't love the God that we love. They didn't believe in the God that we believed in. But he, God placed someone in Joash's life that Joash could imitate that was his mentor. You know, and that's what it is. It's being someone's mentor. When you're pulling them in and say, baby, you don't need to do this. Maybe we should go this way. Or if they see your actions. If they can see your actions. Keo, when you're at Drill, if they see your actions, you will make them want to follow you. If they say, see, and you say, oh, my head hurts so bad. But let me get down and do these 50. Then they can do that same thing because they see leadership qualities in you to make them want to follow you. From imitation to the real deal. To the real deal. We got to get to the real deal. Chris, if you would read 1 Thessalonians for me, the first chapter and the sixth verse. And ye came to be followed of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Joy. So as we see, he said, if you follow us, and this Paul, this Paul talking. If you follow us, because me and Timothy, we're here. And if you follow us and the teachings that we're giving you, then you're following the Holy Spirit. Which means you're following who? Christ. You are following Christ. Don't worry about following me, but follow Christ as we go through. And if y'all remember, these young kids may not. But you remember y'all to hear all the time, brother, you probably remember, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> Christian, you remember, I know you probably remember, you were in that era. Uh -huh. I want to be like Mike. Uh -huh. That was so popular, yeah. they made a movie like Mike. Yeah. And that was because everybody wants to have those basketball skills like Michael Jordan. Uh -huh. They wanted to be able to play with the flu like they ain't even had a flu uh -huh. and win championships. Uh -huh. They wanted to be able to dunk on people's heads. They wanted to be able to do all their spin moves. They wanted to be perfect at the line because they want to be like Mike. Want to be like Mike. They want to imitate Michael Jordan. What they see, oh man, he always in the news. I got to play ball right, 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 right. like Mike. Right. But what about if we come to a situation to reach eternal life, we got to say that I want to be like Christ. Yeah. If we want to see the streets made of gold, we got to say, I want to be like Christ. Amen. It's time I was saying, I know what I used to say. I want to be like such and such when I grow up. I want to be just like her when I grow up or just like him. We have some examples now. We don't have to be like anybody we see on TV. All right. We don't have to use anybody out there to be any type of role models for us. Our children should not have to have anybody on television, no celebrity, that they want to be like. Because we should be those examples that they want to follow. They should, we should have our own riches, and we're not talking about those material things, but we're talking about the love, the joy, the peace, the understanding, the wisdom, and the knowledge that they want to have like we have. We ought to be those examples. And if Keith
Jesus is not that example to Baal, then I should be that example to Baal. Because that is what God has called us to do. That is what he's called us to do. If I can't, if I can't be it, Keisha can't be it, then um, Alicia needs to be that example to Baal. If she see our lives are not lined up like God in lives, then she should say, well, let me talk to her on the side. Let me just tell her a few things. Let me call her and check on her to see if she's okay. We all have that choice. We all have not that choice, but that responsibility. Because we should be those that they want to imitate. You know, I, I got on this baking kick. But right here, I got somebody. Mama, read Philippians 3 and 17. On that, I want to be like Mike. Philip, I need you to be loud, Mama. Be strong, be strong, Mama. Philippians 3 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Mm -hmm. Telling us we need to walk together, arm in arm, mm -hmm. being those examples. We all are evangelists. We all should go out and be telling someone. I shouldn't have to go by myself. I can pull my sisters, my brothers with me so we can go out and spread the word of God. Not being long ranges. He said, follow us. Let's go and together. I ain't going to tell you. You don't know enough. You sit back. Uh -huh. You stand behind me. I'm going to do all the talking. I just need you to come along. No, that's not how we should be. All of us should be on the front line. Amen. Being those soldiers. Yeah, spreading the word. You get him. You get her. You go over there and get them. And let's pull them in. Let them imitate us. Let them follow us. So as I was saying, I'm going to say, baby, keep it keep, keep real good. Because I'm really a great value shopper. <laughs> My folks used to get mad because I used to buy them great value. I, I didn't say used to. I mean, I still buy them. <laughs> right there. I would buy great value. Imitation. imitation. And not all imitation is good. Not all imitation is good. Because a check coke, uh. check cola, is not as good as the real Coca Cola. Yeah. It ain't as good as the real thing. <laughs> that 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 um great value bread, it ain't gonna last as long as Sarah Lee. Now. It ain't gonna last as long. All imitation is not good. <laughs> and I tell you because we cannot follow every body. All imitation ain't good. And let me tell you how you how do I well how do I figure out that I should not follow. Keisha, but I need to follow Miss Ursula. So Keisha, Miss Ursula. How do I know that? Well, let me tell you how I know when I'm trying to get my products and I'm doing this baking thing. <laughs> so I started with my, you know, do the cakes. And so I bought some great value book my Lord. <laughs> to make my cake. No. Cake came out wrong. <laughs> The children don't want to eat it. It's still sitting in there because it was just, you know, it just went right. It went moist. It went, it went all those things that it needed to be to be a good cake. So I'm like, well, maybe what did I do? Okay, the eggs can't be it. Flour, no, the ball, great value ball. So then I started buying land olays. Oh, that's big. And so I, so now I know. Then I'm gonna spend that extra money on Lando Lay because it got my cakes fluffy. Don't it, Keisha? Oh, hey, they fluffy! Oh, yes, so they are much better. So that's how you know when the imitation is not for you. Who to follow, who not to follow. Because if I see her life and her life is not of Christ, because I got a little sense to know, okay, cussing, that ain't Christ. Getting drunk, that ain't Christ. Um, Fornication, that ain't Christ. Not saying that my friend doing nothing, I'm just using her an example. So let's not try to say that this is what she doing. Because she's just an example. That's it. This is what I'm saying. She's telling her, I hear you. I'm not telling her business. She is an example that we're using. So if, if I see her doing that, mm -mm. but if I go when I see Miss Ursula, she's always smiling. She always has her hands up. She turns away from whatever evil or whatever sins. Then I'm going to know in my mind, even though I'm close to Keisha and I love Keisha, but this is not who I should be imitating. Yeah. I should be going over here, imitating Miss Earth because I see her life 
and how she's living it. And that's the life that I know I should be living. Amen. Imitate, all imitation ain't good, children. No, you can't right. follow everything. That's right. They got them now, you know, thinking that they supposed to wear these Capri pants. <laughs> Boys not supposed to wear these. That's right. Okay. Now they got them in the skinny jeans. Uh -huh. that's, that's, that's not all what we, we should not be imitating everything. And it's not about our clothes. It's, it's not about that. But we also got to present ourselves as Christ-like. Just because they make it in the big girl size don't mean I'm supposed to wear it. Oh, I'm supposed to imitate what I see on TV, right. what I see on those shows. And I watch a lot of them. But just because they have it on does not mean that I'm supposed to wear spandex. Right. That, that's not for me because I'm not resembling Christ. Because if I'm out there just showing everything that I have, that's not resembling Christ. I'm not being that Titus woman. I'm not being that Proverbs woman at all. And that's what I'm to be to these young women that are in my life. So they can imitate me. So they can see how I am. And then when I tell them, where is your slip? And they ask me where yours is. Here it is, baby. Right here. I'm, I'm, you can imitate me because I'm just not going to tell you. I'm going to show you as well. Here we have Philippians 4 and 9. Sister Fanny. The things that I'm saying, imitate me. When we come to the church, how can we imitate pastor if the overseer come to church and bruising from black eyes? Come on now. How can we imitate him? How can he tell us how we should be? How can he teach our young men what type of fathers they should be? Or what type of husbands they should be if we see her? She can't keep telling us our faith. That's right. She can't keep telling us Hannah did this. Uh -uh. Once again, this is just an example. That's right. Okay. All right. Our first lady <laughs> never came with no bumps or bruises of death in on her right. at all. Amen. But we're just saying <laughs> that he cannot tell us things when we see something different. That's right. That's right. We can't, he can't tell us how we should treat our, or how a male should treat their wife when we see him talking down on her or talking about her. Or when she stands up in church, He's looking at her and telling her, shut up, saying these type of things to her. He can't tell him anything. First of all, he can, and then women, well, he couldn't talk to us either because we're like, if you treat her like that, what are you thinking about me? Right. You know, how would you feel about me? I don't want to follow a pastor or imitate a pastor. Or then we may think, um, Tasia may think that's okay to have a husband that does that. Because she's imitating what she sees in her pastor. That's the only male figure that she may have in her life. And when she sees that, then she thinks that that's okay. So it's love when my husband beat on me and I got bruises. Mm. It's okay if my husband talks down on me because that's all she sees. She right. trusts her pastor. And she thinks that's okay. How do we imitate him if he's not imitating Christ? Or if he has on his nice suit, I'm not trying to pick on your apostle. God gave it to me at Fresh Cut. But his kids are walking around with dirty clothes. Ashton coming in here with dirty clothes on. And that the head. His hair cut. Yeah. But Ashton hair ain't cut. How can he be there? How can we imitate him? How can Keyshawn a teaspoon imitate him? Right. To see how to be a father. To take care of your household. Got to be, got to be well, not only what we say, but our actions line up for the imitation. Amen. This is not worthy of imitation because it would question him being the head of a household. Which means that he is not following how a man is supposed to treat his wife. And so what I want to ask you all. What godly qualities would you want someone to imitate of yours? Are you worthy? Are we? Are we worthy of imitation? See, I had to check myself on this. Myself. Do I, do I really want my sister to imitate me going off all the time when somebody say something to me? Is that really something I want her to imitate? Do I want her to imitate me being in the streets, pop-locking and dropping all the time? 
and then standing up here and trying to preach a word. Do I want to show her that, hey, it's okay to be out all night long and, 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 and calling this dude and that dude, but then stand up here? I can't fuck that chance about being on her phone if I'm on my phone. All right. Imitate. What are some qualities that we are ashamed of? Even now, I ain't talking about in the past. I'm talking about right now. Right now. Right now. What are some qualities, Chris? What are some qualities that you want want these young men? I'm not. I'm, I'll need you to say it out loud. But what are some qualities we just got sales that we would want these young men to follow? If they were having sales in the street, what would we possibly be doing that we would want them to see? We could be up here praying hard and praying for days, but if they see that one negative thing, that negates all that you've done. All right. Are those that we are close to? Do they see the qualities in us that's worthy of imitation? Because after they imitate us for so long, they're going to become the real deal. And it's going to become a positive real deal or a negative real deal. But those that have these leadership, and that's everybody, all adults in here, we have that responsibility to be that imitation that someone can follow. Keisha, if you read Titus 2, Titus 2, 7 and 8. In all things, show yourself to be a pattern of good works and doctrine showing integrity, reverence, and, cor and culpability, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. So if I'm telling someone not to go out and purchase all these lavishing items. And then I'm driving up in a Lexus. I'm giving them a reason to say something to me. To go against. Because if I'm telling you, you don't need to buy this because you don't have, your kids don't have nice clothes on. But then I'm buying a Lexus and I ain't got nowhere to stay. So how can I tell somebody else what to do if I'm not lined up myself? Regardless if my kids may be dressed right, but we ain't, I ain't got no roof over their head. We should not be doing things that we try to tell someone what not to do, but then they can use back against us. I'm telling Fanny not to lie, but then I lie. How that, how that work? And they say, now where they do that at? You know, we cannot, we have to be worthy of imitation. We have to be worthy. Not only are they imitating us, but are, they are becoming worthy of being imitated. They're becoming the mom. You know, sometimes we imitate people singing, and then after a while, guess what? We become the real deal. You imitate people praying. My son been doing that. He get longer, longer sometimes with his little prayers. After a while, he gonna be a show enough prayer like the deacons uh -huh. and the ministers uh -huh. that he see. Yeah. We imitate somebody preaching, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. and after a while, we become the real deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know these kids when they I was watching what you do. My granddaughter, my little G girls. You know before they was Jersey was dancing the song they danced down there in Greenville. Uh, about the lion, I think it was, or, or some song. Well, one day, Jay just turned on the song in the house, and my G girl just started doing motions. Uh -huh. Like she was praise dancing. Go ahead. Watching. She had been watching, and she was imitating. So even in that, she don't, she don't need to see nobody imitate nobody like they in the club and drop it, drop it, drop it, twerking. What she need to imitate is that praise dance. <laughs> to be able to go out. Every little thing they see, they're going to imitate. They're at that age. That's right. So things that are worthy of imitation. So we should be showing Layla how to twerk. We should be showing Layla how to do praise. Yeah. How to lift her hands. Oh, yeah. We should be teaching her things that are not of Christ. 
I know you all are young, and I'm not saying that you won't go through it, because I know I did. Y'all yeah, know I tell y'all I did everything. Yes, girl. Chelsea. <laughs> but what I will tell you is how God delivered me from those things. Amen. And when I say that I won't go back, I won't go back. Amen. Amen. I have some qualities that are worthy of imitation. We all do. Amen. Do I still have some that I'm ashamed of and I don't want you all to imitate? I got those too. But one thing about it, I, if I know that they're unworthy, I need to get them right. I need to line them up. When we talk about the person that walked with Paul was Timothy. It reminds me so much of our apostle at E.T. That's who came to mind. I wish they were here for this illustration that I have to show you all when imitation becomes the real deal. Because we see that unfolding right before our eyes. And sometimes we don't even know it. But if we listen to the words that E.T. says, he's been watching and he's been listening. And then we all heard the first sermon that he had. The imitation becomes the real deal. We saw when he said, I need to get it all right. And we saw him get down on a bended knee. He knew he had to line it all up when imitation becomes the real deal. So I'm going to use some substitutes here. Brother Chris, if you will come down and be a pastor, please. Sir, I see your face all the time, but I don't quite know your name. Could you come in for a second, please? Amen. And I need you to be E.T. for a second. Amen. <laughs> so, as a pastor, you're standing here. But, you know, we're imitating. We're imitating. So it's showing... Whatever you do, the leader the apostle, then E.T., you do the same thing. That means if he puts his hand out, you go put your hand out because you imitate. Uh -huh. So you go, you y'all walk a few steps. Oh, imitate, imitate, imitate. <laughs> All right, so pause right there. So we all stay, stay where you are. So then we got apostle, we got E.T. coming down. So turn back around. So now as Diamond gets in line, she sees that her daddy is worthy of imitation. Because her daddy saw where Apostle was worthy. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. And then he teaches on what he is. When I read my scriptures, I see where he's following Christ. So yeah, I'm going to follow him wherever he goes. That's right. If he go through the valley, I'm following him in the valley. When he climb up the mountain, I'm climbing up the mountain. So follow me as I follow Christ. Put your arms out. Move some motion. Everything we're doing. Imitation. They were of imitation. Right here. Pause right there. Pause right there. Alicia, if you'll come on up. Whoa. Yeah. Work it. Work it. Work it. She know Christ. Work it. She's looking for her a godly man. All right. So she's like, okay, I done got to this church. I've been with these folks. I see that family. He over here a lot. I see he up under this man of God. And I see that his daughter stick up behind him because she sees what type of man that he is. And then this man is following a puzzle because he sees that, hey, he like he said, follow me because I follow Christ. So now let's all move in the train. The imitation. When the imitation becomes a real, move around, Chris. Let him follow you. Now we got everybody following. We build on it. They're all becoming disciples. They're all doing what God wants them to do at this time. Stop right here. Come in, go. Yes, go. So now, Apostle says, he feels confident in his teachings. He feels confident in his teachings. And this is coming. Did I get somebody? First Timothy 4 and 12. Right here, Miss Ursula. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So now, Paul is telling Timothy, I trust you to go this way. I'm going to go this way, but I need you to keep the word going on this way. No matter what comes against you, <laughs> no matter what they say about you, <laughs> no matter how they try to knock you down, <laughs> No matter how they try to bring up your age or your past against you. No matter what they say you used to be and that you're not able and you're not worthy. I know that you've been following me because I've been following Christ and now that spirit is inside of you. So now when he sends him along his way. How many people? 
He's been seeing what E.T. has done. And he saw diamond follow. He sees how close E.T. follows behind Apostle. Right. Now he's broken off. And now he has somebody to imitate him. From imitation to the real deal. Now you go. You follow him.
And like she said, they used it, it all comes together. <laughs>